Hello, I'm Yixuan from MIT, and I'm working on Inside Scale Flapping Wing Robot uh, with Professor Kevin Chen. Today, I'm going to share with you some of the recent progress that we have in our lab. And especially, we're going to talk about something about the yaw control of the tiny flapper uh, in our lab. So this is a picture of the tiny robot in our lab. As you can see, there are four pairs of wings on the robot and it's a flying robot. So every time when people see it, um, the first question they ask is, how do you compare this to the traditional quadrotter? So here's a comparison. Uh, as you can see on the top, uh, it's a traditional rigid large uh, quadrotter. And at the bottom is the soft micro flapper that we have in our lab. And I will try to split the research progress in the past couple of two decades into three stage. Uh, the first one is the mechanical design of the robotic platform, because you need to have a reliable platform to perform any task. And then once you have a good platform, you can move on to the model-based control and some of the more advanced uh, control algorithm afterwards. So for the code router, uh, people started to develop that around in the early 2000s, and they start to have more and more reliable uh, mechanical design. And around 2010s, uh, people developed really good model-based control. In the more recent years, uh, we start to see uh, some of the learning-based or optimization-based control um, start to appear in most of the top journal. And of course, including some of the reinforcement learning or model predictive control. But all of this, I would like to say, all of this advanced control algorithm, all based on the fact that we have really good low level control, which means we have the capability of controlling row, pitch, yaw, and thrust independently. So this is what happened in the quadrotter uh, community. So if we turn our attention into our solve micro flapper, it actually um, happened very recently. The first soft micro flapper uh, appears roughly three years ago in the Nature paper in uh, 2019. And in their uh, three paper uh, coming up only, but uh, their three paper appeared only, but it pretty much covered the mechanical design and some part of the model-based control. In particular, we can see we are able to control the roll, pitch, and thrust of our tiny robot independently. That is to say, we can hover at the single set point in a 3D space, as you can probably see from uh, Professor Kevin Chen's talk already. And we can also achieve a lift to weight ratio around three to one. So this is awesome. But if you're in the flying robot community, you will see there's one control authority that is missing. That is the yawing control. So this is what happened if you don't have a yaw control. What you are looking at is a 20 second flight and I'm playing it at twice the speed and there is no yaw control. So you can see the heading angle or you say the yaw angle of the robot is actually changing throughout the entire flight. And if you cannot see the video really clearly, here is a series of uh, screenshots of the video. So from the very beginning, robot started to turn around 50 degree and then oscillate a lot during the entire flight. And when it's about to land, it actually turned more than 90 degree, which is really bad. Because if you want, if we want to place a camera on board in the future and ask this robot to go into a factory to carry out some of the surveillance operation, you probably want the robot or the camera to focus on a certain point. And if you cannot control the heading angle of the robot, you won't be able to see what you really want to investigate. In addition to this sensing application problem, um, on the control strategy side, we also have some problem because most of the controller that we are using for the flying robot, we actually assume you have very low angular rate and we pretty much omit the gyroscopic effect to simplify the problem. So if you have a really rapid yawing motion, it will make the control even harder. 
Uh, but what is con um, controlling Yao or like actuating Yao so difficult for the flapping wing robot? And why is it not a problem for the traditional quadrotor? Because for the traditional quadrotor, we have four spinning propellers. So we can actually use the conservation of angular momentum to regulate the heading angle. But for our flapping wing micro robot, we are utilizing time average lift force. That means all four lift force are pointing upward and in parallel. So we won't be able to generate any net yaw torque to regulate the heading angle. To tackle that, we try to come up with a new configuration and we use the inclined stroke plane approach. Uh, you can imagine it's pretty much tilting the each individual unit inwards by 25 degree, as you can see from the red arrows. So the lift force is no longer only pointing upward. So if you see from the top view, you can see their horizontal force uh, on the robot as well. By doing that, we will be able to actuate the yawing motion. And of course, by doing that, uh, we compromise some of the lift force. So it will require higher driving voltage. But since we have the weight to lift to weight ratio around three to one in the previous study, we don't really care that much. And from the real world experiments, we, we haven't seen any problems for the actuator to handle a slightly larger or slightly higher driving voltage. So um, how do we exactly actuate the yaw in motion? If we, uh, if we want to actuate the positive yaw torque, we can increase the lift force on unit one and three and decrease two and four. By doing that, we can, we'll be able to actuate the positive yaw torque. And if you take a closer look, you can see by having this configuration, we don't, we won't generate any additional moment with respect to the pitch and roll axis. That is to say, when we are actuating yaw torque, we are not compromising the pitch and roll stability. So um, to do the negative yaw torque, we can do, uh, do it with a similar fashion, but like actuating two and four instead. So here's a video um, of uh, how it exactly works in real life. Uh, you're looking at a 10 second flight and I'm playing it in real time. So the heading angle is set to zero. So you don't really see the robots um, changing its uh, yawing angle. Actually, it's quite a nice flight in the sense that the yawing angle is, the arrow of the yawing angle is smaller than 10 degree and the roll and pitch are quite stable compared to the state of art uh, flapping wing robot. At the same time, the X and Y position are within the 1.5 centimeter, which is less than half of the um, wingspan, the, the robot lens uh, in this case. And in addition to a static set point, we can actually change, try to change the set point during the flight. So this video shows that we change the set point from zero degree to negative 45 and then back to zero. Um, this is probably not the best flight that we perform. As you can see, the XY position drift quite a bit, but this is still an ongoing research that we're uh, trying to improve. But what we can learn from this video is that the yawing actuation is quite effective and the stability for pitch and roll doesn't seem to be effective that much because you don't see a uh, very high frequency oscillation on the robot body. And again, here's a screenshot of the video if you couldn't see it uh, properly previously. Um, you can see on the first figure, it says it goes from the zero degree and then turn to negative 43 and come back to around 10. So I will conclude that the yawing actuation is quite effective in the sense. But uh, if we go back to our original question, why is yawing act control or yawing actuation so important? So if we take a look at the quadrotor community again, all those um, advanced controller actually assume you have good roll pitch yaw thrust control. That is to say, once you have this four degrees of freedom ready, you can simply utilize all those advanced controller here. So what we are doing and what we, I just show you in the previous couple of videos is that we try to do the yaw control. And I believe this is the missing piece 
in the model-based control. Once we finish this, we will be able to leverage all the very mature control algorithm from the quadrotter community, and we will be able to achieve more agile, robust, and precise flight. And I truly hope in the upcoming years, we will see our soft micro flapper could have similar performance as the rigid large quadrotter, or even in some scenario, outperform the quadrotter. So in conclusion, we utilize the inclined stroke plane method to actually uh, yaw in motion. At the same time, we carry out the real world uh, experiments. Uh, we did a 10 second flight with yaw in control and we don't see a very severe uh, compromising, uh, we don't really compromise the roll and pitch stability. So with that, we were we are more comfortable to say we can control the roll, pitch, yaw, and thrust independently, and then we are heading toward for uh, to implement some of the more advanced control algorithm on our tiny flapper. And that will conclude my talk today. Thank you.